Hello YouTubers! Welcome to my next tutorial on how to fetch data from any website you want. So this is a Sunday morning 7th Feb 2016 in India time is 10.35 am and it's the winter morning. So let's see what's the temperature uh, in my city. So I'm press the temperature button so it is processing some data and the temperature here is around 22 degrees Celsius. Brr it's not that much cool so yeah so this is all we're gonna make today uh, we will learn how to fetch data from any website so let's get started so basically I've used this touch screen module so that it get easy for you to understand this project uh, but you can use anything you can use any LCD or seven segment display to display the integer numbers anything you want this you required is a Wi-Fi module um, okay, so first of all, uh, first of all, let's declare the uh, let's discuss the theory behind this or how this process is working. Then we will come to the code. So basically, um, let's take example of uh, live time in India. Okay, so live time India. Uh, Okay, so I will go to one of the website. Okay, let's say timeanddate.com. Okay, so this is the website and this is the current time of India. Uh, let's go to this HTML page, inspect. So basically, when we request this link or this URL, it gives in response this much, uh, this code. In response, we get this code. Now from whole this or this long code, we want only the data of the current temperature. So we want something, uh, something to request or something which we request and in response we get only the time only the required data so uh, for example here time is uh, again inspect uh, where's the time 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 um, where is the time yeah again I need to select this and again inspect so this division okay so here is the time now we want to target this particular data so for that we require an API now API stands for the application program interface uh, in detail if you want to study about API you can watch another videos but uh, for those who want uh, overview of what an API does uh, for that I will explain uh, API is basically an interface through by using API we can target the required data from whole HTML page and we can fetch or we can get the data required data only from the whole page available now the question is how to make an API now API can be made manually and uh, for those who don't know about coding like me uh, can go to this great website called thingspick.com thingspeak.com is a great great website for uh, starting into getting into the IOT internet of things it's basically a framework so it will automatically um, provide us uh, the required API uh, any from any website or from any server so let's see what's the procedure of making an API so first of all you need to make an account I already logged into my account so we'll go to apps apps and we'll go to um, the last block things HTTP or thing HTTP Simplify device communication with web services and APIs. So here this thing we will require. So we will make a new thing HTTP. Now the now we need to provide some of the information that from which website we want and for which data from the whole page we want. We need to provide some basic data only and it will automatically generate an API. So first of all we will we'll name that API. Uh, suppose live time India. Okay so now we will do we have to provide the url so we'll provide the url of the website from which we need to fetch the data so copy um, and paste the url so this is the second step authentication username password leave it blank and we need to get st http is all about getting and posting so here we need to get the data so we'll select the get and the version of http is 1.0 or 1.1 and the last and most important thing is Pass string. Now, what is that? Uh, we need to provide a tag 
or what we can say huh, a tag or an identity of the data which we want to fetch so here is the time so we will right click the time and copy xpath xpath will copy the uh, a tag like something uh, or id yes it will fetch the id of that data uh, from that page so we will provide this id to parse string okay so this much amount of data we need to give and it will automatically automatically generate an api key this is an api key particularly for this uh, for fetching the live time anyone having this key can fetch that uh, live time from that website uh, timeanddate.com so we will save this thing http and let's see the miracle of api so this is the api and this is a get request uh, we need to simply post this link uh, onto our browser and let's see what's happened okay so rather than the whole html page we got the required data that is the time of live time in india that is 10 41 38 am so this is the base of this project uh making an api and it becomes very simple most simplest using this thingspick.com uh i'm sorry i have not gone into detail about api because the tutorial will become uh, more longer so you can watch the api uh, what uh, what you can learn about api on uh, anywhere from youtube or wikipedia so i will explain the basic task of api to fetch the link or to fetch the data from the website okay so we have already generated an api now let's see how to use that api through esp8266 now let's come back to the code okay so up till here is the necessary declaration of uh, this tft module which is necessary to be declared before using this and this is the host name and password for uh, uh, this we need to provide for connecting our esp8266 to a wi-fi uh, network so my host name is sms and my password is 8 times f then the functions need to be performed so i have already um, perform the functions like uh, gold and temperature and I don't think well I've used I've also performed the string views yes so this is basically declaration of the functions now let's start or let's start with a new function name string uh, time let's say we will make a function of time and which will return a string in response so this all our declaration and setup I have uh, what you can say the board rate is set to 11,000 uh, sorry 11.5200 and this is required to initialize that uh, what you can touch screen and the buttons function uh, this function will print the buttons onto the screen uh, for those who have used uh, this touchscreen module uh, will get easily understand so these all are the buttons to be printed on the screen so let's make a new button named uh, time so I uh, will just copy here we need to provide the coordinates and the size of the rectangle so I am simply copying the size and changing the coordinates to uh, 180 and the string or the data to time and that this is yellow and I think the data is sufficient okay so let's upload and see a, uh, with this a button should be appear should appear on the screen naming name time okay so okay 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 I need to change the coordinate here also so it will be um, 9180 okay set cursor I need to change to 200 y axis is 200 okay so um, okay so button name time appears now next after buttons let's see what is there okay after button it goes into the loop now this, here are the necessary coordinates uh, to for the touch uh, touch coordinates okay so whenever we whenever uh, we touch the screen it will go inside this function and the coordinates will be saved in integer x and integer y so coordinate and it, it will be shown the coordinate will be shown by the, this 
P dot uh, sorry X and Y on a serial monitor we can see the coordinates and according to the coordinates we need to assign the coordinates for particular function for example for the reset button the coordinates of X are 320 from 226 to 320 and for Y it is from uh, 82 to 129 so likewise we need to assign the coordinates so whenever uh, we touch in around in, in this limit it will automatically call a function reset uh, in the same way we need to make the coordinates for time I have already uh, assigned the coordinates uh, for time and we need to just copy and paste the another function because the pro the what you can say the command remains the same only the name changes so we can just simply copy and uh, here it will black out uh, the rectangle above the buttons so it will basically the clear uh, what is printed before and if debug then it will show time whenever it is touched I'm sorry time and cursor 0 comma 0 wide text size 3 and fetching data and call a function name time instead of use so this is uh, this much amount of functions or this much command will be executed whenever we touch in this coordinates that is the time button so now we need to just make a string or a com <coughs> I'm sorry we need to make a function named time so we will make a function here the string time okay so here also I will simply copy and paste because the procedure is same changes only in the API key only in the API key and the name so I will copy up till here copy and uh, paste it in this function okay so I will discuss the instructions one by one uh, okay okay so before before that uh, we need to see what happens when we press the reset button or which of which commands are executed when we press this reset button so I have made a function called reset I will discuss that okay so reset so it will first of all uh, reset this uh, Wi-Fi module with AT plus RST and it will disconnect uh, any uh, disconnect the Wi-Fi through which is all which the Wi-Fi module is already connected so it will disconnect Wi-Fi if connected then it will select the mode 3 that is both access point and station mode and then it will search for the Wi-Fi network and it will connect to the network whose host name and password you have provided so let's see what happened when we press the reset button so reset okay so it shows resetting okay mode is equal to 3 and searching for Wi-Fi network it will show connected when it connects to the network whose host name is provided Mm, come on come on okay so this all our functions when performed when the reset button is pressed so after connecting connected uh, after the device get connected to the Wi-Fi now the now we need to start uh, from here okay so we will uh, after connection we will stop uh, after connecting to that uh, network we will establish a TCP connection so for fetching the data we need to first of all establish a connection through a command 80 plus CIP start so we need to send 80 plus CIP start is equal to the type of connection here it is TCP connection the host server name and the port number port number is here of course 80 uh, it, as, as it is uh, through HTTP <laughs> Okay. okay so we need to provide a host server name now the host server name is basically the name of that host through which the API is generated here it is api.thingspick.com so I have made the string uh, atcip start is equal to inverted comma tcp inverted comma close comma inverted comma api.thingspick.com inverted comma comma at and slash r slash and for enter I am sending this string through send data function now send data function requires uh, requires the string the timeout period is 3000 that is 3 seconds and 0 and 1 uh, if it is 1 it will uh, show the response on the serial monitor that is for debugging so I returned 0 here so I after uh, sorry as soon as we send this command it will automatically uh, ask us to ask us to provide the number of characters we need to send which is 
80 plus CIP send is equal to 90. So here we are sending a 90 characters after this uh, this command. So we need to provide a number of characters here, and this will be remain constant because in all the different or uh, different different APIs from thingspeak.com only the API key will be changed uh, and the rest of all things will remain same so the characters also will remain same as the key is constant of 16 characters I think okay so so this also remains constant the change is only in this key now the key generated is uh, which of the keys generated API thingspeak okay so we need to just copy the key uh, copy and paste the key here control V okay so this is and now we need to change the string to TIME time okay so it will send this string uh, first of all the get API API key and the host server name that is api.thingspick.com okay let's see uh, I'm just commenting this uh, steps to filter the data because uh, before that you must or must be aware that which data we are getting and why we need to filter so we'll just uh, make it one so it shows the response in the serial monitor now I think control U upload okay I need to change here TIME time and upload okay so let's see what data we are getting and why we need to filter that data. Okay, so as soon as I press the time button, it shows the fetching data. Okay. Okay, so here is the received data. Uh, now, received data that is IPD, 11, 11, 18, 13 am closed. Okay, uh, out of that we we require only this much amount of data. So we need to filter this data and uh, rest of the data are not at all useful to us. So we need to filter it. So that's why I have written the code for filtering the data. And this is also very much very much easy. Let's let's uh, see the logic behind this filtering. So uh, every time whenever it gives response, it will show uh, it will gives plus IPD comma the number of characters in response, and then semicolon and the data will start. So we required the data after the semicolon and the data before this closed. That is the C character. So I made an algorithm which will filter from uh, filter the data starting from particular character and ending at particular character so here our data is starting from a semicolon and ending before ending at c of c for closed so character before required data starts and character after end uh, required data ends okay so every time it's not the case that uh, the data is in between semicolon and the closed function uh, it may be between any of the characters so you just need to change the character before the starting of the data and uh, after the end or after end of the data so just provide the characters and the data will be filtered now let's see if this uh, works or not let's upload this okay so let's see uh, when I press the time button it must works uh, hope it works okay so required data we got the required data that is 112509 am uh, the delay is because of the uh, my screen recorder uh, crashed so that is uh, the delay so anyhow uh, the required data or the required task is completed we fetch the data from the website called timeanddate.com and display it on to our uh, touchscreen module or you can use the data anywhere you want you can make even a wi-fi uh, a wi-fi clock which fetch the data every 10 minutes or every sec every 5 second or 10 second and you want so this is all about today's session you can fetch any data from any website like the stock market data the live gold rate uh, which i have done live temperature live time live youtube views anything you want uh, just make an api and making an api becomes much 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 simpler using thingspick.com so explore that website the great website for iot related things and uh, stay tuned for next such uh, amazing tutorials until then goodbye thanks for watching